Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I know you guys been waiting for this part. The part that we announced the winner to our last giveaway. And we we see you guys, you guys all put in your effort, all your hard work, but we can only pick one winner. And the winner is B Lovely Nails. Congratulations to you, B Lovely Nails. You just won yourself uh, I'm not polished brand new glow collection. So if you could just send us a DM on our Instagram with your address and uh, we'll have somebody send out your present to you. A brand new set of the Glow Collection from Not Polish. And for the one that did not win, don't worry. Guess what? We're gonna have another giveaway right now. Same as last time. If you want to win the giveaway, make sure you guys like the video, leave a comment down below, and make sure you sub subscribe to the channel. Yeah. You know? The whole good stuff anyways that's how you enter to the giveaway and good luck to you guys for today's nails we are gonna do some christmas nails and it's really easy it should be really fast but i did switch up my recording a little bit so it might take a little bit longer than what we usually do so anyways guys check it out this is i'm gonna show you guys this tornado bit so this is the bit that i use to take off right so um i think i just I, I just got this so i'm i'm gonna so to remove the powder we're gonna go drag it off the nails like this downward motion okay from the top down to the bottom so when you go in this direction it actually takes off the powder a lot faster than if you go on um from side to side like this you know I would go side to side like this on like around the cuticles area, but like right around where the um, more products need to come off, I would go downward like this, kind of drag it off, drag it towards you, right? So I actually love this bit. You can see how fast this is actually coming off. And usually I will kind of file it off to about here, like about 80% of the nails. And it's actually so fast. So 80% of the nail, and then I will soak it in acetone to remove the rest of these products off. Now, now we are done. I'm gonna go in, look at all this dust. And then we're gonna go in with our sanding band and I'm gonna kind of rough in up the area a little bit. Okay, rough it up. So we're gonna go in with the long coffin tips. This is the non-C curve straight coffin tip so this is my new favorite okay my newly favorite tip and of course you know i always use a scissor to um, trim the edge i i don't really use a nail tip that's perfectly fits my nail bed because i don't feel like it's wide enough for me so i'm, I'm always doing like more of like a wider coffin or taper square so for me to get that look i usually use a tip that's a little bit bigger and then I would trim the edges of the nail. So what I would do is um, I would put it on. You can see it's a little bit bigger. I can, um, I, what I usually do is trim the edges real quick. And with this scissor as well, make sure we do replace them often because it does get dull and it's um, when it gets really dull, what happens when you trim is actually it will cut off the tips but it will bend the tips, okay? And then one drop in the middle and then just straight down. And whatever is sticking on the edges a little bit like that, I can just drop a little bit of glue. And then later on, we're gonna file it to um, the same length as the nail, right? So for this one, I'm actually not gonna trim it. I'm just gonna put it on so you can see how, I think this is like a safer way of doing it. Like I mentioned in my other videos, is that like, you know, if you're new and you just started out, sometimes trimming the edges, sometimes you can over trim on one side and then you'll end up with like a crooked nail. So this is kind of like me doing it like a different way. So two ways for you guys to see. So it's just one and I always look at it from like this angle as well because sometimes it's straight this way but this way is not straight kind of slanted a little bit I mean kind of shorter my short so what now that I have the first cut so when your clients want a certain length we do want to trim them a smidge longer than what they want because 
what if we kind of mess up on the shape we want to have a little bit more room to you know maneuver around so what i do to measure my nail tip is just like your client's cuticles to cuticles i forgot the thumb again this is why we don't do the thumb a lot of times all right back at it with the thumb so i always say the thumb is like this uh, i mean not, i'm gonna say so the thumb gets like i don't feel like it gets a lot of love so that's why it's always get left behind and i don't do a lot of i don't go all out with the nail art on the thumb so sometimes i forget about it okay so cuticles to cuticles and line it up just like that now we're gonna go in with the tornado bit again. I don't use the sanding bit to um, to smooth, to blend the nail, um, the, the tip into the nail bed. I use my tornado bit. It's faster and it doesn't get as hot. It, it, it gets your nails pretty flat. And it doesn't get as hot as the um, sanding bit. Okay, so now you can see it's a smidge bigger right so I'm gonna go in wow keep forgetting about the thumb <laughs> the damn thumb <laughs> but I can show you guys how straight this tips are so we're gonna go in and you know that's a lot of cameras to focus on one two three okay so I'm gonna Make sure that it match with you. You don't want it to, you know, match with your nail bed right there. So we want to match it with your nail bed. And before we even prep, I mean, apply on our primer, we're gonna tear a little piece of it, put some acetone on the piece of paper, and we're actually gonna wipe off the nail plate you know why because sometimes your clients come in especially now it's winter time and it's super dry outside so they will put lotion on right before they come see you and then um, you can't see it right you can't see it so you forgot to wipe it off and now you put the primer on it can lift your nails a lot easier and move that out of the way and then this is the triple x bond triple x bond Bonnet. Now, our jar of monomer, I think. Should, should I put it up here so you can see how I pick up my bead? And then my powder. 143, this is first nude. This is the one I've been using. Give it a nice tap because you don't want to open it and it's still everywhere. And then you see how like this powder is more compacted so it's like straight across. We don't want to pick up a bead of acrylic when the powder is like compacted and straight across because the bead will you, it will be a lot harder to pick up the bead so make sure you fluff it up and kind of tap it towards you so this way the powder is kind of fluff up and then it's like towards you and it's easier to pick up okay i think i like okay so i like to work with my um index finger first and I usually lay my bead sideways or the other way as well. Sometimes I lay it this way because it, when you drop down the bead, it's actually more tapered. So laying it this way will help you drop down a more tapered bead. And then now I'm just gonna bring it towards the center of the nail and then drag it down. Just very gently, very softly, okay? We don't have to apply too much pressure and then end up dragging too much product off. And once it gets towards like the very tip of the nail like this, that's when you wanna apply more pressure because now your powder is setting more, so it's drying up more. So you do wanna apply more pressure to drag the product off the nail, okay? Drag it off the nail and then wanna cut it off at the end just like that and we're not done yet okay I'm gonna use my clean brush to kind of mold the shape of the nails so while the product is wet we want to mold it to whatever shape we're doing nice and taper 
because later on when it's dry it's actually harder to do or well, you can't really do it when it's dry but when it comes to shape it will save you a lot of time as well okay remember application clean nice application will actually help speed up your process right there you go have you guys been doing a lot of christmas nails okay so this one is still kind of wet right it's kind of wet i'm going to switch you to the next one So actually if you guys do two beads, it's actually a lot easier to peel, peel, peel your apex. Hold it in place. You see how it's kind of runny, so I'm just going to hold it in place. So when it's runny, hold it in place. Kind of push it towards the center. And then now, once it's set a little bit, then I'm going to press it and pull it towards the and always point well hard for me to point it like this because I'm working on myself but when you're working on a client uh, make sure you point the nail downward okay in real life like us to us gravity is not our friend because you know it make everything drip drip drop sag <laughs> But with nails, gravity is your best friend. So make sure you go with gravity, not against gravity. Right? Okay, and now I'm going to clean my brush to dip it in a little bit of monomer. And then I'm going to mold it into a nice, clean shape. I uh, I've been loving the the shape that I've been doing is I call it kind of like taper square but like not kind of coffin but not too taper square but not too coffin that's my new favorite thing so when I find something I like I kind of stick to it okay so sometimes now that I've been picking up pretty large bead and then the powder gets all dented right there I like to fluff it up again we don't want to work with a powder where where your jar is like dented in the middle okay you always want it to be nice and fluff up okay so make sure once it gets dented after a couple beads we fluff it back up okay apply it close to the cuticles hold it in place let it go Just a nice and enough string for the nails. We don't want that big hump of an apex as well, okay guys? We don't want a mountain of apex. We want just enough. So I kind of look at it sideways, kind of tap it up. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Oh, that looks good. We're going to go to our next one. Close to the cuticles. Let it go. Push it towards the center of the nails. And then I'm going to drag it down. Kind of like brush it down. Like brush it down. Okay. Kinda brush it down. And then tap it up. Brush it down. Make sure whatever is sticking on off onto the side, we remove it, okay? Because once it dry, it's actually harder to fix it. Oh, 
pretty that color is. Okay, same for this one. I'm gonna drop it like sideways a little bit like this. And let it go. Push it towards the center. Make sure that I'm in frame. So this brush I'm using right now is a number um, 16, okay guys, I'm using a number 16, and I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm going like, I'm pushing my product towards the center of the nails, okay, I'm not like dragging it out towards the free edge of the nail tip, because once you make it super bulky, you're gonna, spend a lot of time trying to taper it in after so I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna taper it as I go down and then cut it off at the end then I kind of look at it this way make sure I straighten it out straighten. and then press using the body of my brush kind of press it against the nail to make sure that it's straight Okay. So again, fluff up your powder. I um, bought some of the uh, snowflakes um, uh, charms, I would say. But I haven't been using it. I think I should use it for my next video. Towards the center, you see that? So when it runs a little bit, press it towards the center of the nail. And remember, if you guys are cold, I bet you is so cold in some places right now. So what you can do when it's cold, your product's gonna run a lot more than it will be here for me, right? I'm in Southern California, so it's hot as hell. But if you're in a colder climate, it will be a lot runnier. And I used to live in Pennsylvania, and I know how shitty it is to work in um, with coal products. So what I like to do is, I used to have like a, ta a table fan table fan that actually heat that blows heat I would leave my powder against that fan to kind of have that heat blowing at it to kind of um, warm the powder up and so once the powder gets warm up I after, when I'm ready to use it I give it like a nice stir like this to evenly distribute it the heat around the jar so that way it would help me a lot so make sure if you guys in cold climate you can do that okay some people would say that they actually put their bottles the monomer in um towel warmer and i think that might work too i didn't i, I didn't do that i, I used the fan the heat the heat and fan blowing the hot air at my powder and then kind of give it a nice stir okay i love when i record on myself i think the thumb is my favorite it's so easy for me to work with. You see how it kind of runs a little bit? I, I'm gonna push it towards the center of the nail before I drag it down. Center. And then pull it. It's funny how it's my favorite to work with on myself, but it's not my favorite to do designs on. Nobody really sees the thumb, you know? Just you spend all that work on the thumb and nobody really sees it. I mean, you see it, but I just think like once you do like designs on 
all ten, I mean all five fingers, it becomes a little much. So I just usually do design on these two. I mean, unless it's like simple, smaller designs, I'll do all of them. But if something's like crazy, I try to keep it very minimum because it takes forever, and um, I feel like it just kind of overwhelming, you know. Those are the cuticles. I'm gonna push it up there, let it go, press it in place in the center, push it upward, and then drag it off the nail. So it doesn't matter how many beads you guys do, just try to keep it like one smooth transition. Like one smooth transition. I'm not gonna do the thumbnail. Still kind of wet. I'm gonna go back with like a clean brush and I'm kind of like tap it, look at it sideways, sideways, and then kind of like tap it upward or whatever, or maybe downward or whatever to kind of like level it out. Okay, while it's still wet, you still can level the uh, product mm -hmm. off. Look how beautiful this could be. Okay, so if your nails usually break, it usually breaks like right here, right here, okay, usually. So make sure we want the apex to stay like around right here, right here, right here, right here, right where the uh, nail tip, where your nail bed meets, uh, where we glue on the tips pretty much. Okay, so I'm actually gonna keep this brush soaking in a monomer just to be sure that whatever I have stuck to it earlier it will come off right and as you guys remember we I don't look how look how taper the shape is you can see that you see how I don't keep it really bulky so what I like to do right now is I'm gonna go in and actually pre-shape my nails right pre-shape so on this my right side I'm gonna go like this a little bit so if you're working on a client it's usually upward like this if you're working on a client it's usually up but i'm working on myself so i'm holding it at like an angle to kind of bring it in do you know the best kind of practice you can have is actually doing your own nail so um if you guys want to learn how to shape the nail with the dremel do it on yourself it's actually really 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 helpful it actually that's how i learned how to do it it's on myself first and then i brought it up to do it on my clients so 
down, down, okay? And this side is up. So see, this is when, that's why we say application is the key, because if you have a clean application, it'll be easier for you to work with later on. So when I pre-shape, I use, I like to start like right around this area, okay? This area first, okay? Kind of taper it. And the reason why I do this area first is because when you, when, um, when you're doing any type of, any shape, wow, when you're doing like, it doesn't matter what shape you do, it has to be tapered from the top all the way down. So we want to make sure that we, like, if you do this part first, what if I make it a little bit too skinny and it doesn't match up here? So what I like to do is do this part first, kind of taper it in, just perfectly match with my nail bed and not any skinnier. Like, don't try to cheat and make it super skinnier. Than your nail bed so if it's smaller than your nail bed then it can break easily and lift right at that area so what i'm doing right now is i'm actually match it like as perfect as i can to my nail bed and then once that looks like it, it's like lined up with my nail bed pretty good then i go down here and try to match the bottom to the top right because if we do this part first what if we make it too skinny compared to this part right we don't want to do that so we want to match it all the same so I like to go from the top down. Make sure we push down. So we all kind of skin on this side as well. Now that looks good. Now we go into the cuticles. So if when you're working on your clients, you can actually kind of pull back the skin a little bit like this, a little bit, just a tiny bit, just to kind of release the um, acrylic that's stuck onto the cuticles. So when you file like the cross like this, it doesn't like, you don't end up cutting your client's fingers. Cuticles. So usually I'm going around the cuticle first, so I'm going very nice and slow, and slow around the cuticles area first, right? And then now that looks good, then I am going to move towards the body of the nails. And I always, always actually look at my um, client fingers at an angle like this, like angle like this, angle like this, making sure I'm not out of the I'm angling like this. Okay. Because what happens is when you look at it directly from the top down, Sometimes you don't see that it's uneven until you look on the side. So I look from this angle, okay? I look from both angles. I look from this angle and this angle to smooth out the rest of the neck. Oh, much easier if you look at it from this way. This angle and this angle. Now that looks good. You can see. Okay. And then now this looks good. We're gonna dust it off. Okay. I'm gonna show you guys how it looks like before I do the shape. It. see the shape. Okay. So we're gonna go in with our not polish file. Make sure we kind of pull the skin back a little bit, like around this area. Just like, ah, oh, my nose itchy. Just a little bit right here, because if you do have a curly kind of stuck to, like right here, this area, and I'm gonna go in like file directly on top of it, sometimes it will end up cutting your clients really bad right here, okay guys? We don't wanna do that. So make sure you kind of lift it up a little bit, release anything that's stuck to the skin, and kind of like push that one here, like that. Push that one. To release whatever that's stuck to the skin, which is the acrylic. And then kind of push. I use my, I actually use my paint and file to kind of push down a little bit. I don't really use my finger. I use my file to kind of push down a little bit. Not too bad, not too hard, okay, where you feel kind of like hurting your clients. And again, remember in all of our videos, well, most of it recently, is we divided, we divide the nails in three sections. So first, second, and Third. So first, second, third. So the first section is I'm gonna 
taper it in and I'm kind of bringing my file like inward, inward a little bit, like inward like this. Taper it in and then kind of come out to this mid section right here and then the last section. So first section, second section, and third. First, second, and third, and now I don't want to straight across. It's super focused into this part. It's not my favorite part, but it's also a very important part that I really can't skip or cheat. You know, in the last video, like on my ombre video, I kind of showed you guys how to cheat, but like not with the shaping. That looks uh, good, 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 good. And I'm gonna give it like a nice little, I'm gonna give it a nice thin, even it out. And uh, you can make it kind of like a little bit on the thinner side at the tip, only like right here, okay? Like this much, this much, a little bit thinner because that way it's actually easier for your clients to go home when they need to pick up like a penny or pick up certain thing. It's actually easier, but don't go thinning out the whole nail because if you thin out the whole nail, what happens is acrylic does not bend, it's not flexible. Acrylic are not flexible. It actually will snap. So if you make it too thin, it will snap, it will break right off. So it's, it's not flexible, okay? So don't make the whole nail thin. You can cheat and make it like thin, like right at the tip of the nail. Like I want to make this. Now I'm gonna go in with a buffer. I'm gonna buff it nice and smooth. Buffing is a very important part as well, okay guys? Make sure you buff it nice and smooth. Okay, so before we draw on the nail design, what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna use a matte top coat. Ooh. Actually, I might have to get a wash your hands, okay? But don't don't do what I do. Only do what I say. Okay, I'm gonna give it a nice, just thin, thin coat of matte polish. So why do I have to do matte top coat? Is because when you do gel art on top of so even though like we buff the nails really nice and smooth, you know, and whatnot, um, sometimes you might have like that tiny, tiny like hairline of like a scratch on top of the surface. Cause you know, a buffer technically is kind of like smooth it out the top, but also scratching the top. So you can have like that hairline of like a scratch and we don't see it. So when we go to paint, on our design what happens is the paint actually runs into the hairline so sometimes it gives you not a straight line but like a kind of a little bit jagged so what i like to do is um matte top coat it just to make sure we have a very very smooth surface always stabilize you see how my you see my how pinky my pinky i'm always stabilizing against my hand okay even when you work with your clients or whatever i'm gonna give it a nice clean swipe Boom. Okay, now we're gonna cure it under the light. Make sure we don't hit it going in. I think I hit it, but it's okay. We're gonna do some Christmas, cute Christmas design that I posted yesterday. Because, oh, well, I actually did that set yesterday and our recording didn't go through, so here I am again, the same set. Okay, so we're gonna cure it for 30 seconds. And I'm actually gonna use our line, fine line brush. I don't know if you guys can see it, fine line brush. It's a dual head, so it comes with a, a shorter and a longer. And I like to, oh, let's use a long one. So sometimes, sometimes when I stick it in, like I'm, I'm in a rush, I'm in a rush, right? And I stick it in and uh, the hair, the, the, the hair of the brush kind of stuck to the, uh, the cap and then it kind of ruined on the side and it has some little, tiny little hair sticking up and I'm actually gonna trim it off. I'm gonna cut it off. We're gonna use one of my favorite red is, I'm gonna use the gel, kind of dirty. The gel liner art, the um, number three is Redemption and the white is um, White Lies. 
I'm gonna use this brush as well, so but I'm gonna actually not I'm not using it right now. I'm not using that right now either. So we're gonna go in with this color and I'm gonna make sure I because sometimes make sure we when we remove all the gel, we only remove from like the hair. But sometimes the gel is all the way up here as well. So make sure we remove from there because because we, if we only remove from this and sometimes, okay, it looks good and I, I go to draw my French tip, sometimes the glob of paint from here drips down and then boom. So make sure we clean it all the way from the top all the way down, okay, from the right here, the plastic part all the way down. Okay, so now that looks good, we're gonna go in with the thumb first. Okay, so I'm gonna do a deep French. I know there is prop. I've seen so many ways of doing deep French and it looks so easy, you know, when people do it, like, you know, they draw an X and then they do it and it looks so easy and um, I try. I actually tried it on live video when we went live and I actually ended up having to wipe it off right on the live video. So uh, this is my way of doing it. I only do it this way. And then I'm actually gonna paint the gel all the way to the side of the nail, but not like, you know, going too much off where I'm gonna lose the shape of the nails. I'm actually gonna outline this with like a white as well. So I don't need to make my French like super perfect right now. If you can, that'd be great. But if you can't, don't worry about it because I'm actually gonna have to outline it with white again. So. And look how opaque this color is. Just one coat, okay guys? I'm not gonna do two, three coats. Try to keep it at minimum, just, just one coat. When you do two, three coats with the deep French, it, ends, it will end up looking super thick. Okay. Make sure I even it out first. And then make sure this is And I'm gonna brush right at the tip. Just a little bit at the tip. We don't need a lot at the tip. We just wanna cover that part, okay? Right at the tip. Okay, so now before we cure it, we're gonna give it like a nice little, you know, tap. Just enough to kind of remove any extra, but not too much where I'm actually removing the paint off the nail because this is red. This is red. So when we wipe too much, you might remove too much of the paint and you might expose the nude underneath on the edges. So we want to give it like a nice tap. And with the thumb, what I'm doing, actually, I have it in the uh, the lamp right now like this at an angle. So stick your hand in there and then kind of twist it a little bit, angle it. Because we a lot of time, because our hand goes in flat like this, so sometimes the light doesn't shine directly on the other side of the nail. So sometimes it won't dry on the side. So when you go in, kind of turn it a little bit, okay?
some of you guys don't like you paint the edge like this, but I feel like we need to because or else it will look like you're missing paint right there, right? A lot of people say, oh, I don't do the tip because um, it can ruin the shape, but um, if you do it right, it should ruin the shape. So actually now you would think that I'm gonna draw on my design, but no, I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna actually finish it with a matte top coat. And by the way, so when I am, my jar is kinda dirty, so don't judge me, okay? So by the way, you see how this is the not polished nappa dish? You should you would store it this way, right? But no, I am gonna actually, because um, if you store it this way, right? What happened is the cone, like how it's kind of cone, like pointy, it will touch the monomer and it can get really messy. So you have to flip it this way. That's how you keep it nice and clean. And do dump out your monomer after. So only don't fill it all the way, maybe half, and then dump it out after each client. It's so much easier to work with clean monomer than dirty monomer as well, okay? Make sure you keep the monomer clean. Monomer, dirty, hard to work with. So don't think just because your brush is dirty, it's hard to work with. Your monomer is dirty, it's actually really hard to work with as well. So make sure you clean your jar, make sure you um, just, you know, pour enough just for the client. And then... Um, dump it out after and clean it's so much nicer to work with a clean jar Going slowly, I constantly bump the um, the light, and then now we're gonna use our not polished sugar effect. I use this for everything. Well, not everything, only certain design, but I use it for every color. This can go over actually any color you want: black, blue, yellow, orange, pink. It goes over every color except for red. It turns red to kind of pink, so. gel is still wet we're gonna go in and sprinkle it with our white glitter white glitter make sure it covers it well give it a nice tap cure it another light flash cure flash cure for like 15 seconds okay now i'm going to show you guys how i use my fine brush okay so i'm actually using just a white polish okay, i have a white gel i'm going to use my white gel just so I don't empty out my liner, you know. I'm gonna use this, this one has more product. I'm gonna use a white gel right there. And then we're gonna go in with our design. So we're gonna do a uh, candy peppermint on this one.
candy. I mean sugar. <laughs> Call it candy. Sugar effect. Okay, I'm gonna flash it here for like 15. 15 second, maybe 15 second. And then I'm you know what I'm, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna do like a Just a little bit like that. 
so it can be nicely evenly like all the same like the gap is all nice and even so a lot of time when you take a picture you know the finger all go like this like this i mean like this it's not that cute, so it's kind of like space it out a little bit, space it out a little bit. There you go. So when you're working on your client, have your clients go like this, and then we can snap a picture. All right, guys, we are done for today. That's it, and hopefully it does not take us three days to edit this video, or by the time we're done editing, it will be New Year's. Hopefully this video will get out by two days. See you guys later.